good morning all of you today we are going to discuss about ricardo's theory of rent this is coming under unit 18 block 5 in this class we are going to analyze about the theory of rent given by david ricardo first we will list out what are the assumptions of this regarding theory of rent then what are the reasons for existence of rent and how this theory has been criticized the main objective of this theory is to understand how the rent theory implicated the economic factors let us get into the class david ricardo an english classical economist first developed the theory in 1817 to explain the origin and nature of economic rent ricardo used uh, economic rent to analyze a particular question in the napoleonic wars uh, between 1805 to 1815 there was a large rise in corn and uh, of course the land prices did the rise in the land price force up the price of the corn or did the high price of the corn increase the demand for land and so push up the land prices so he want to know the truth whether the because of land price the corn price is increase or corn price uh, land price is increase so he have given a theory ricardo has defined the term rent as that portion of the produce of the earth which is paid to the landlord for the use of original and indestructible power of the soil in his theory rent is nothing but the producer's surplus or differential gain and it is found in land only he has given number of assumption we will see one by one the regarding theory of rent based on the following assumptions the first assumption is rent of the land arises due to the difference in the fertility or the situation of different plots of the land it arises owing uh, original and indestructible power of the soil this is the first assumption he have made the second assumption is he also assumes the operation of law of diminishing marginal returns in case of cultivation of land as a different plots of land differ in fertility the produce from the inferior plot uh, plot of the land diminishes though the total cost of production of each plant of land is the same so based on the fertility the cost will change the ricardo looks at the supply of land from the standpoint of the society as a whole so this is the third assumption and the last assumption is in the ricardian theory it is assumed that the land being a gift of nature has no supply price and no cost of production so the rent is a part of the cost and being it does not or it cannot enter into the cost or the price this means that from the society's point of view the entire return from the land is a surplus earning so these are the four assumptions made in the ricardian theory of rent a possible section b question is there sometimes they may ask what are the assumption of ricardian theory of rent now let us explain the theory according to ricardo rent theory it arises because of two reasons what are they number one scarcity of land as a factor the second one differences in the fertility of soil first we'll start with the scarcity of rent the ricardo assumed that the land has the only one used to grow corn this mean that its supply was fixed 
as shown in the figure. You can see the figure, 13.1. Hence, the price of the land is totally determined by the demand for the land. In other words, all the price of the factor of production is perfectly inelastic supply. Uh, of course, here we are considering the economic rent. There is no transfer earnings. Thus, it was the high price of the corn which caused an increase in the demand of land and a rise in its price, rather uh, the price of the land pushing up the price of the corn. However, this analysis depends on the assumption that the land has the only one use. In the real world, a particular piece of land can be put in many different uses. This means its uh, supply of any one of uh, use is elastic so that uh, it has the transfer earnings. So the basic idea is land is a gift of nature and it is having a perfectly inelastic supply. But sometimes a particular factor while uh, cultivating the corn, that particular piece of land is elastic. So it has the power of uh, giving a transfer earning. Now let's move to the second uh, factor, the differential rent rate. According to Ricardo, the rent of the land arises because the different plots of land have different degree of productive power. Some lands are more fertile than others. So there are different grades of land. So the difference between the produce of the superior land and that of the inferior land is nothing but the rent. What is called differential rent. That is land is, a, is the same. Some piece of land is more fertile. Some piece of land is not. It is an inferior uh, fertility. The difference between these two, we used to call it as a differential rent. Let us illustrate this uh, particular regard in concept of differential uh, rent. The regard assumes that the different grades of land are cultivated gradually in a descending order. The first grade land being cultivated at first, then the second grade. After that, the third grade and so on. With the increase in population, and with the consequent uh, increase in the demand for agriculture produce, the inferior grade lands are cultivated for creating a surplus or to earn rent from the superior grades. The first grade land being the most fertile produces 40 kgs, we are assuming. And the second grade up to 70 kgs, and the third grain and so on. So as the fertility changes, there is a decrease in the produce. The first grade is 70 kg, second grade is 40 kg, third grade is 20 kg. So the first grade land earns surplus on the rent, say 100 rupees. The second grade rent will be 50 rupees and the third grade is lesser than that. The first two plots called intra-marginal and the third grade is called marginal because it not it is not earning any rent but the first and second grade because of the difference in the fertility that difference in fertility you earn some money there will be a transfer earning that particular value we used to call it as differential rent the simple example shows uh, how the difference in the fertility of land in different plots of land create rain in the superior plots of the land. You can see the diagram. The concept of this differential rain arising due to differences in the fertility of different plots of land. See the figure 13.2. There, uh, there are three different land. The first one is having more return. The second grade is having comparatively higher than the third grade, the third one is not having any rent. So the, in the vertical axis, we are calculating total produce. In the horizontal axis, uh, use of land, we are measuring. This diagram is very clear that 
there is a differential rent earning here uh, ad and dg and gj you can see in the diagram uh, three separate plots of land with the same size but difference in the fertility the total produce of ad is abcd and uh, that of dg is defg and uh, for gj it is ghij the first and second plot of land generates a surplus shows uh, they are having different fertility the shaded area indicates that which represents the land in the first two plots of the land since the third plot gj has no surplus it is a marginal land and it is no rent land we may say grade 4 is below this marginal and it will not be cultivated because the rent is negative in this example rupees 25 will be the rent value now coming to the actual part of the theory from the regardian theory we can show the relation between the rent that is the land and the price here it is wheat we are say or corn since the market price of the wheat is determined by cost of the marginal producer and since uh, for this marginal producer the rent will be zero so the record of concluded that the economic rent is not a determinant of market price rather price of the wheat is determined solely with the market demand of wheat and availability of fertility of land this theory gains its importance because at that time they don't know how to uh, quantify the input the land the factor of production land they don't know how to quantify that this regardian theory have given uh, fertility as a factor and it has been quantified in terms of money uh, what we gain from this particular theory these are the deduction from the theory if the rent depends on the price and on the superiority of rent producing land over the marginal land we can reduce the following what are they first one improved method of farming once we know how to grade the land then there is a possibility of improvement in the cultivation the improved method of cultivation may lead to a fall in rent that is the demand is remaining unchanged it is because increase in the output of the superior grade lands will make the cultivation to the inferior grades of land is unnecessary so people try to find out the superior fertility land the second one the population is uh, growth is likely to lead to rise in rent since the increase in demand for the land will bring more uh, quality land for cultivation thus lowering the output in the marginal land so if the price of the food increases the rent of existing land will increase so these two are directly proportional the third one is the improved transportation facilities what does it mean the improved transportation facilities are likely to lead to a fall in rent it is because of the output of the less fertile land of the foreign countries may be able to compete more closely with the home produce so there are there is no need to cultivate the inferior land of, of the home area as a result the output of marginal land rises and the rent falls thus what we can conclude from this theory it is difficult to say whether or not a rent increases with economic progress however rent is likely to fall with the economic progress if the population grows is uh, unable to fully neutralize the effects of the technological process and the improvement in the transportation facility but this theory has been criticized in uh, many ways some of the criticism as i have listed out we will see one by one recordo considers land as a fixed supply of course the land is fixed and absolute sense but the land has a alternative use so the supply of land is a, in a particular use is not fixed we can't say it is inelastic for example the supply of wheat land uh, is not absolutely fixed for the given period of time you may cultivate some other crop nothing wrong in it so this is a way it has been criticized some people have criticized in the other way the recorder's order of cultivation of land is not realistic 
if the price of the wheat falls the, the marginal not need not necessarily go for the cultivation of the first the superior grade of land might cease to be cultivated if the fall in price and its output causes such uh, land being demanded for other purposes we may construct uh, realize that is, we can construct the house the third criticism is the productivity of land does not depend entirely on fertility alone it also depends on the factors of position investment and effective use of capital the fourth criticism critics have been pointed out that land does not possess any original or indestructible power as a fertility of land gradually diminishes unless fertilizers are applied regularly record of assumption of no rent land is unrealistic as in reality every plot of land earns some rent although the amount may be differ some land may give a smaller return but some return will be there but Ricardo assumes there is no rent for the marginal land. This is an unrealistic assumption. Ricardo restricted the land to the land only, but the modern economists have shown that the rent arises in return many factors of production. Why? Because land alone is not having the rent. Even the house having a rent and uh, missions and other things. they are also uh, getting rent so we cannot say the supply of land is inelastic the last criticism is according to ricardo rent does not enter into the price but the point of view of an individual farm rent rent to form the part of the cost and price it is part and parcel of the total cost of production but he assumed that it is not constitute in spite of various shortcomings of ricardian theory it can be discarded as uh, stoner and hugue rightly remarked the concept of transfer earning helps to bring the simple regardian theory of rent into the closer relation with the reality so these two economists have strongly recommended this theory holds good of course this theory have criticized in many ways but still it holds good with this i am completing this class uh what we discuss in this class is we have defined what is regarding the area of rent and we have listed out the assumption of regarding the area of rent and uh, we have uh, defined two main concept differential rent and quasi rent and uh, what are the keywords in this particular thing it is a scarcity of rent and differential rent the expected semester in persons are explain the concept of factor pricing or uh, define record of theory of rent what is quasi rent what do you mean by scarcity of rent or differential rent and uh, the expected section c question is explain record of theory of rent with the diagram with this we will uh, come to the end of the session if you have any doubt you can ask me we will see in the next class thank you thank you for watching the video